Representation matters You don't realize how important it is Till you see someone who looks like me And you, Kitch Noir is out here Plus they're black owned Send high quality cards to show high quality love Hey guys, welcome to the Make It Happen Affirmations podcast with Sherelle, me from Kitch Noir. Today's affirmation is based on, I welcome joy, fun and love into my life. And these affirmations are very special and meaningful to me specifically this month because so many things have happened. I don't even know where to start. I'm just going to share a few stories with you. And I know I say that the special, I know that I say that affirmations are super special and super meaningful every month, but this month I feel like I'm going to share a few um, inspiring stories with you that have happened. Um, And I feel like Kitch Noir is starting to become something that I didn't expect it to be at the beginning. And I feel like I'm realizing what Kitch Noir is is and I just love the way that it is truly evolving and becoming more than just a greeting card brand to me and hopefully to a lot of my customers as well. Okay so over the last month or two I think I'll say um, I've realised, really realised that Kitchen Noir is actually helping customers to create an aesthetically pleasing, organised workspace and lifestyle which is amazing first I noticed that it was definitely doing that for me I'm not too sure how many of you know that I was a civil servant a full-time civil servant um I was luckily allowed to work from home in October 2020 therefore I was able to put in a lot more time with Kitsch Um, my side hustle and I just began to use my spare room a lot more than I was. So it definitely became my workspace and I started to realise how important it is to make sure that the objects that you're using every day and the stationery that is on your desk and just the way that everything looks around you in your workspace is vital you have to love the way that it looks otherwise you'll probably dread going into that workspace you you might not feel comfortable it's not inspiring to you it's just not aesthetically nice so when I realized that I sort of it just went up from there really I would often write down on an A4 sheet my plan for the week I would often write down Um, a plan for the month on an A4 piece of paper stick it on my wall and then I would order stuff from like Amazon or another random website but it was hard to find a A1 calendar that would fit on my wall something massive and I found one but it was just ugly and I just had it on my wall for about a year and I just looked at it one day and I thought I have a paper company I have a stationary brand why am I using these scraps of paper to organize my life let me create something that will complement my atmosphere or my environment should I say so I created the dry wipe wall calendar which was released last month which was the latest new product and it has done so well. Thank you guys so much for all your feedback. If you haven't seen it already, it's 90 centimeters by 60 centimeters. It's a bundle, so it comes with a pack of eight dry wipe pens, and it also comes with a Kitchen Noir eraser, and you can wipe it dry every single month. You can stick your goals on it, and you can use it again and again and again, And have a look at the reviews guys everyone is going mad for it I love it I use it every single day I also use my weekly planner every single week and I just love ticking things off the to-do list so stay tuned as to what 
the new product is this month. You can find it on my Instagram. On the 6th of November, there'll be a surprise reveal as well. And it's more than what you bargained for. So keep your eyes out for that. And when I started putting work into this, it excited me so much. Like I felt this passion inside of me being released and it just felt so, so good. And then I started realizing how important it was that everything around me looked nice and how it just gave me more energy. It made me feel more excited about the work that I had to do. So that's how it started to become more than a greeting cards brand for me. In fact, it probably happened a bit more earlier than October 2020, but I would say that's when things started really getting into motion. But also, not only have I been getting to know the brand more, I feel like I've been getting to know myself a bit more as well. And I've started to focus on the things that actually bring me joy and then obviously start to create them, which is just amazing that I have the opportunity to do that. And I've slowly started noticing a theme of organisation and how much joy organisation brings me and how fun I find it. And I think a lot of the times, because of society, we often think that things aren't allowed to be fun or maybe it's a bit geeky or a bit nerdy when we find certain things fun. For me, it's stationary and organisation and I love being organised. I love being on time for things. I love being prepared and I have so much excitement for tools that help me to be those things. Like seriously, it just makes me so happy. So I'm so glad that I found the passion and fun in my work. But, and I think this is a big but, important but, is that when you find a passion, it doesn't always have to be in your work or your job, your nine to five, whatever you wanna call it. It could just be something that you do in your spare time that gives you peace or makes you happy or gives you a lot of joy. And I think a lot of the time we get it twisted that if you have a passion, it has to be something that you wanna make money from. Or if you have a passion, it has to be something that you eventually see yourself doing full time. And that's not the case. For me, it just happens to be that my full-time work is now what I'm so passionate about. And I do love that. But if you wanna follow your passion and eventually make it your full-time job, I feel like listening to what I'm about to say could be quite valid. So following your passion isn't always going to be a simply smooth ride and just, you know, rainbows in the sky, sprinkles falling down, pink everywhere. I'm definitely going into describing my dream world right now, but basically it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, you know, a smooth ride. I think I've given enough descriptions <laughs> of what a smooth ride is, but um. I'm just saying that obviously fear comes when you try to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. And that is what one of my stories is about today, which I'm going to get into right now. And it's about facing your fears. So the other day I got a DM from one of my customers who I love dearly. I love all of you dearly. And I responded to it as I do all the time. And she had said, her name is Jamila. And she had said to me, hey, Sherelle, I'm just wondering, do you do public speaking? I do not. I have never. I don't really want to either. <laughs> I sort of kind of made this podcast, guys, to sort of warm me up to even speak in any way because it's just not, I don't feel like it's, um, something that I've grown up being comfortable doing. It's not. So it's something that I'm trying to get better on, um, hence this podcast. And I feel like it's getting better as the time goes on, not meaning to blow my own trumpet, but toot toot. Um, I know I've got a long way to, well, I think I've got a long way to go. Anyway, there's always a room for improvement, basically. Back to Jamila, I don't even know how I got there, but Jamila messaged me and she said, do you do public speaking? I was a bit like, depends who's asking, when the answer should have just been no. Well, it shouldn't have, because then I wouldn't have got this opportunity. So she said, um, I work at a school and it's Black History Month and I want you to come and speak to some year 10s and inspire them. And I was really taken back by this because I don't know why, but it feels like to me that I was in school like yesterday. I have such clear memories of being in school. I can't believe that it was like 
15 years ago or more but I think it's because I have such a close knit group of friends that I actually met in secondary school and all of our memories like that is the foundation of um our relationship basically and we always refer back to things that happened at school so it just feels like yesterday to me so when she had asked me this I instantly remembered being in assembly every morning and just knowing what it was like when you had a guest speaker coming to talk it would be something that you would speak about the whole day because it was something different it was like a new person coming in not the same teachers always you know giving their announcements every morning um and it was just cool you know um so I thought yeah why not this sounds like a great opportunity and one of my things that I love doing is inspiring other people and encouraging other people and um, empowering other people, which is actually the slogan of the brand, embrace, encourage, empower. So I was not gonna say no, especially to kids. And it was in my area, it was in Brent. I'm from Brent. It was a bit of a no brainer. So I said, yes, not feeling very confident about this, but confident that I wanted to inspire younger people. So I said, yeah, and I basically went there and um, spoke in front of, 315 year olds which is major to me like huge so I was obviously 100% bricking it the day before I had to make a slideshow as well like this is a major deal to me guys I've not done anything like this before I was so so nervous like literally even two days before I was sort of thinking to myself why did you even accept that you was going to do this but I, I knew that it was for a good reason and even driving there I felt so so nervous so scared and it was like a weird feeling I couldn't really explain what it was I was like scared anxious worried but sort of excited and confident at the same time and when I walked out of the school I felt what is the word I should have really thought about this before I just felt like this new burst of energy come into my soul and I felt this adrenaline, that's the word. I felt this amazing energy and it just felt so rewarding. I felt like I'd overcome an obstacle that I was really scared of. And I tried to not make a big deal out of it before because I, I know how powerful words are, hence this affirmations podcast. And I did do my affirmations in the morning, which I think really helped as well. But because I know the power of words, I tried to not say the night before, oh, I'm just so scared. Oh, I'm just so nervous. Oh, I'm just so worried. I avoided those words. It even makes me feel a bit sick saying them right now, to be honest. Um, but I avoided that. And I just said, I feel a bit funny instead. And when I think about it now, and when I was driving home, I was thinking, when my husband had asked me, oh, how are you feeling about tomorrow or whatever, I thought maybe I should have replaced funny or oh, I'm feeling a bit eh, with I'm feeling excited. And then when I looked into it, fear and excitement are both arousal emotions. They're actually very similar to each other because the brain goes into a high state of activation. And whilst I was feeling those feelings, I can completely see how those emotions are so similar and I feel like if I had kept on saying to myself I'm just so excited or I just can't wait because that was actually true I couldn't wait for it to be over but if I just if my husband had said to me or my friend had said to me how are you feeling and I just said oh, I just feel excited I really feel like it would have changed how nervous I felt. So I do encourage you, I'm gonna try it next time. I'm not too sure if it works, but I've done a little bit of reading about it and apparently it does. So I'm really going to try and turn my fear into excitement because right now in my mind, it's making so much sense. And the way that I was feeling, it did actually feel a bit like excitement. So I'm gonna be welcoming in excitement fun, love, energy, confidence into my life. I'm going to be saying those in the affirmations um, a bit later on. But also, I'd like to say that I, I usually ask a guest, when I have a guest on the podcast, I say to them, oh, what is your favourite affirmation that you've chosen and why? I'm going to ask myself that. 
And the answer to that is, I am overcoming. That is my favorite affirmation for this month's podcast, because I do feel like I overcame something and I do feel like I want to invite more of those opportunities into my life. And I want to have that adrenaline of, I feel like I'm overcoming, I feel like I'm growing, I feel like I'm following my passion. And all those feelings make me feel like I am truly living in my purpose. So that's something that I want to continue welcoming into my life, even though it is scary, even though it is something that I have a little bit of fear about. I want to get over that and I want to grow. So I want you to ask yourself, what do you want to welcome into your life? What words do you use that definitely need to be replaced? And I want you to really think about what your favorite affirmation is from the selection that I've chosen. And I just wanna help everyone and myself to stop seeing things you find scary as threats, but start seeing them as opportunities and see where that takes you. So comment on the YouTube video or contact me through my email or through the website or DM me on Instagram or make a public comment on Instagram, put it on your story or whatever and just let me know what you think about this podcast and what your favourite affirmation is because like I said, these statements are very close to my heart this month, hence the story that I told you and I feel like I'm just for the first time in my life in my life, in my career, for sure. Feeling like I am living my purpose and I am providing a service that is meaningful and important to a lot of people. And I wanna continue inspiring people and I want to continue encouraging people. So let me know of any ways that you think I can do that even more or any products that you think would be good for me. I'm definitely open to creating more. So thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for listening to my story. I hope that it gave you some inspiration as well because it's something that I'm very proud of. And let's get into the affirmations. You know the drill, so just repeat after me. I welcome joy, fun and love into my life. I welcome confidence and light. I welcome excitement and energy. I welcome faith and hope. I welcome independence into my life. I welcome solutions. I welcome passion into my life. I am growing. I am facing my fears. I am becoming. I have purpose. I have passion. I am passionate. I am overcoming. I am focused and fun. I am joyful and loving. I am confident. I am light. I am full of energy. I am full of faith and hope. I am excited for the next opportunity to present itself.
I am excited for the future. And those are the November affirmations. Thanks so much for listening, guys. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, just contact me at my website, kitchenoir.com. And that is also where you'll find my amazing greeting cards and super cool organisation tools that help you to create an aesthetically pleasing organised workspace and lifestyle. And if you're not already, please do sign up to the newsletter. You can find that at kitchenoir.com as well because this month on Black Pound Day, as I said before, there will be a major reveal. A clue is it's what a lot of you guys have been asking for and it goes hand in hand with the Affirmations podcast. So I think you will love what you see. So make sure that you check it out on November the 6th and sign up to the newsletter. As I said, I look forward to recording another podcast for you for the last month of the year. It's going to be a good one. Thanks so much, guys. Don't forget to embrace, encourage and empower. Love always. Bye. Representation matters. You don't realize how important it is till you see someone who looks like me and you. Kitch Noir is out here. Plus they're black owned. Send high quality cards to show high quality love.